Hi everyone and welcome to week 10. This week we have a few things on the agenda. Um, of course your online learning materials and I've also put out a poll to see if you want to have a class on Friday um, and I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out at this stage but let's see how we go. The class attendance has been really really low. We only had 11 people in class on Friday and um, I think that if that so few people are going to show up to class then it's probably better if I design material that's going to work for the majority of you online rather than just the 11 who show up to class. So let's talk about the topics that we've got this week. This week we are looking at memes, movements and virality. So we're looking at how things go viral on the internet and of course this is really important because as social media practitioners um, you need to understand how information flows and also how things can pick up momentum and just fly on the internet without a whole lot of intervention from you. So I've put together some content about this topic for you, memes, movements and how things go viral and you will be able to explore some of those, um, some of the things that you've seen go viral um, or some of the memes that you really like as part of your learning activities this week. The other topic is a bit more serious and it's something that um, has a lot of personal relevance for me. We're going to be looking at health and social media and how people with chronic disease or even terminal illness use social media uh, as part of their everyday life about their health, okay? So how they're actually going about their lives in social media, dealing with their health issues in that space. Now it's personal because I'm going to introduce you to an article that was written by a friend and former colleague of mine, Elizabeth. Um, and Elizabeth has stage 4 colorectal cancer and um, she was diagnosed at 30 um, and her diagnosis was two years ago. Um, she's written about um, how she's used social media to share her cancer with the world and I'm going to link you through to an article of hers um, in the literary journal Mianjin. It's a really uh, powerful story I think of how she actually went about using social media to share what was going on in her life. It just so happened that during the time she was being diagnosed um, there was this thing happening called Blog Every Day in June and this is where a whole bunch of uh, people in the library and information professions all try and blog every day for the whole month of June. Um, and so Elizabeth was having um, some diagnostic work done during that time and she blogged um, through that process of diagnosis um, and it was really very powerful as a reader and I think it had um, obviously it played a big role in her experience of her um, of, of cancer. So I'm not going to write a lot about this particular topic because I think that Elizabeth's words and the words of other people that I'm going to share with you um, about how they use social media to um, as part of their uh, wellness um, are they're really powerful words um, and I don't think I need to write a lot to go on to go along with them but I wanted to show you that social media isn't just for catching up with friends or um, you know that, that, that there is something really powerful and personal that can happen in that space so we've seen you know political movements and activism and those kinds of things and those are powerful serious things um, but this is powerful and serious and very very personal um, and so I think it's best for you to hear from the people um, that have something to say about this. So I'll share Elizabeth's article with you and there's a couple of other articles and things to go along with it but um, that's just kind of one angle on health. Another angle of course is using social media for health and wellness so just everyday well-being and so I'll put up some resources um, for you related to that as well. So um, I hope that this week's topics, you know, they're going to be challenging for you, but I hope that you will also learn uh, something from them about, you know, the seriousness of social media, the fact that it's not all just smiles and puppy dogs and, and whatever else, there is some serious stuff going on there as well.
So as I said, you have those two topics this week. You are voting on whether we're having a class this week. But the final thing that I wanted to talk to you about in this video is your participation in the learning community. So far, we have seen nowhere near enough participation in the learning community. And in fact, I was in class on Friday talking to a couple of people and they said they hadn't had a comment on their blog since week three. That is really concerning. Um, you guys have got a participation grade and you're supposed to be building a network here that you engage with in this unit. So you must ramp up your commenting to increase your participation grade. Um, and also increase what you get out of this unit. So this isn't just like a, you know, a show up to class and get a, a mark for showing up kind of thing. Um, you know, we design the learning in this unit so that you can learn from each other's materials as well. So if you're not doing that, you are missing out on both the marks and part of the learning experience. So please, this week, set aside one or two hours to just read some of your peers' blog posts. To help you with that, I have added a list on the homepage of the um, tags that I've asked you to use on your on all of your learning activities throughout the semester. So you can click on those tags and access people's posts about those topics. So please make sure you use those or use whatever other means that um, works for you to get out there, read your peers' posts and comment on them in a meaningful way. Just an hour or two in the week and we factored that time into the workload in this unit. So you really need to be, you know, it's not like we're asking you to to use your weekend time or you know to use extra time that you wouldn't otherwise spend on the unit this is part of the learning design and we factored it into the time taken to complete the activities and so forth so please get out there I can't stress how important it is for you to engage in the learning community in this unit not just for your grades but for your learning now in Friday's class Kirsty Kiddo and her team came along to show you the connected learning analytics toolkit now I've mentioned this a few times, but I really want to encourage you to sign up for the toolkit. It is a research project, so there is an ethical statement there and you have to actually opt in. We're not going to grab your data unless you opt in. But the week 13 activity is going to ask you to quantify your activity on the unit site over the semester. It's also going to ask you to look at trends and, and um, your the topics you wrote about or you know quite a number of different aspects of your own participation. So the quality of your post, the amount of times you post, you know, other trends in when you post and those kinds of things. The Connected Learning Analytics Toolkit is going to help you to write that post well. You can do it without the post, but it will mean that you have to manually look back through all of your stuff instead of getting this nice dashboard full of all of your data on the unit site this semester. So please um, check out the link on the homepage and go through and join. Um, you need to kind of agree and type all your details in. It's just a form and then you will be able to access the dashboard with your data. Finally, on to assessment. This week we'll be returning your persona posters and we will also be marking your first batch of blog posts from week two to week seven. So uh, we'll turn those around as quickly as we can, but definitely within the two week time frame. When we return your persona grades, we'll also put up a post of general feedback about um, how everyone performed across the assignment. So that will help you to get a feel for where you can improve um, and just add to the uh, feedback, the personal feedback that you get on your criteria sheet. Okay, that's it from me for this week. Um, please go ahead and vote by 9am tomorrow about whether you want to have a class this week so I can get on and prepare the video resources if you're not going to come to class or if we're not going to have a class um, and then just get stuck into this week's materials and to commenting on each other's blogs. Um, I may see you in class on Friday, I may not, but we're around the site. If you need anything at all, please comment in the forums. Um, and we're also reading and commenting on your blog posts and really enjoying doing that too. Have a great week guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, so I said that was it, but I lied. Um, after I finished recording, I checked my email and noticed that many of you had emailed me last night about having difficulties with the unit site. So I have put up a post to say that you can have until midnight tomorrow to finish polishing up your posts for submission and also to post your posts that were due last night. I'm really sorry about the issue with the site. I am working with um, our web host now to resolve the issue, um, but I hope that the extra couple of days will help you to 
uh, get done what you need to get done uh, so that we can mark your posts. Thanks guys.